right, well, hey guys, my name is Phil Stringer. I am an AI efficiency coach specifically for real estate. So it's awesome to be here with you. I wanna do a couple things today. I wanna take you through maybe some tips and tricks uh, with AI, chat GPT, and some other tools that you can start implementing in your business to move the needle, right? We're talking generate more revenue. We're talking uh, increase your productivity and efficiency, take back some time. And so I know a lot of people, AI is a huge buzzword right now. Like everyone's talking about AI. You've probably seen it in a lot of marketing, right? But the thing is, is we have to be very careful with the tools that we're using. We can waste a lot of time on certain AI tools to figure out, okay, what is the right tool to use? What's actually gonna help me? What's a waste of my time and what's a waste of, of money, right? And so what I wanna do for you today, I wanna provide some value by condensing time for you because I have done the research on hundreds of tools and I can tell you there are certain ones that are good and certain ones that aren't worth your time. So today I wanna to start off by just addressing maybe some common misconceptions or maybe even some fears around AI because we've all heard of it. We, a lot of us are using tools like chat GPT because they're so widely available to use, but how do we actually use this thing? Is it going to take our job? Is it going to replace us? These are the questions that I hear all the time from a lot of different real estate agents. And so I'm here to tell you that AI is not going to replace your job as a real estate agent. That's not where AI is right now. But a real estate agent using AI will replace your job. And I know that's kind of a scary thought, a scary thing to think about. But this is the biggest technological advancement since the Internet came out. OK, AI is here to stay. It's only getting better and better. The technology is moving at a rapid speed but it's here to stay. And I always relate this to agents who have been in the game for 25 plus years when they were in real estate before the internet, what was the MLS, right? Well, it was a catalog or a book that was biweekly or monthly. And so I always go to those agents and I said, look, if you didn't evolve with technology, if you didn't evolve with the internet, would you still be in business? Well, the answer as you can imagine is a resounding no, right? You had to evolve with technology if you wanted to stay in business. And this is the same thing. So that's why I say, you know, look, don't be don't be afraid of it. It's not going to take your job. What you really should be afraid of is not embracing or evolving the technology. That's the fear, because this technology is not some crazy, massive, confusing thing. You don't have to be a computer genius. You don't have to be some tech wizard. I don't care if you hate spending time on your phone, if you hate social media, if you hate computers, there are things that you can learn and strategies that you can implement that are so easy to use that at the end of this session, in just a few minutes, you'll be able to understand AI at a much better level and it won't be as scary. The barrier of entry is going to be much lower uh, than you think. Okay. So what we have to understand is that the AI powered agent will eventually replace the standard agent, just like the internet powered agent eventually replaced the standard agent. It's just a matter of time. But the good news for you and the good news for me is that you don't have to be this AI master to understand it. You don't have to be a crazy tech nerd, right? I'm going to walk you through some very simple steps, some strategies, some tips, things that you can implement today, starting right after this session. Uh, so that you can start really, really using this tool to help implement uh, in your business and to increase productivity, efficiency, and revenue, okay? So what I want to do is I want to jump in and I want to share something with you. I've got a tool. Uh, the whole purpose of all of this training, in three words, if I were to boil it down for you, it's evolve or die, right? We've had to do this since the beginning of time human nature. We have to evolve or we're going to die. And it's the same with technology. You have to evolve with technology. And so I don't want you to be scared. I want you to be excited because you have an opportunity for a major promotion in your business by utilizing some of these tips and tricks where you'll be able to start running circles around your competition because you're using these tools to leverage your time. All of this, 
everything that I'm about to talk about in one word, it's all about leverage. You will be able to get so much more leverage by implementing these things. Now, I've got a QR code I'm going to share on the screen so that you guys have that. Uh, you can scan this QR code. It's going to take you to a free download. I've got a PDF that I've put together for you where I have my top 10 favorite AI tools for real estate outside of ChatGPT, right? ChatGPT is widely known. A lot of people use it. I'm going to spend some time in ChatGPT to show you ways that you can use it. But specifically, I want to give you 10 other tools that are out there uh, that you can use outside of ChatGPT. And then in that same PDF that I'm going to give you, I've got 10 really, really good prompts that you can just copy and paste into ChatGPT and start really changing your real estate business with just those simple prompts in ChatGPT. Now, one thing I want to do before I share this QR code with you is I don't want you to get overwhelmed by the list of tools. I'm only going to show you maybe one or two today out of the 10, um, and then I'm going to spend the rest of my time on ChatGPT. But if you implement all 10, you will fail. If you implement even five, I guarantee you, you will not do well. So what I want you to do is I want you to know that these tools are possible, but I don't want you to go crazy with trying to implement everything. Maybe pick one, and if you're a real go-getter, pick two that you can implement, but focus on one or two that would move the needle for your business and do it that way. Don't try and bite off more than you can chew. Again, AI, you can end up running down a rabbit hole and then you're, you've lost all of your time, right? So focus on the important thing. Make sure you really pick one or two things that's going to help and focus in on that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And then I'm going to show this QR code that you can, uh, that you can implement. Okay. So here we go. This uh, is the QR code. Boom, right there. You guys should see that on your screen. It says free AI tools and prompts, and you've got that QR code. So you can scan that. It's going to take you to my website where you can put in your name, email, and phone. When you hit download to submit that, it's going to send you an email to that email address with the free download. And that PDF is going to give you, again, the top 10 free tools uh, and then the top uh, prompts that you can start using. I'll highlight a couple of those tools. Um, that way you can see maybe uh, what some of them do, but um, I'm not going to go through all 10 just because of time today. Okay. So uh, if you want to go to that PDF, if you've pulled that up, you have it in your email uh, inbox, I'm going to show you what that PDF looks like. This is the PDF. So it starts off with the tools here. We've got several different tools and we have the link straight to. So you can actually click on this link and it'll take you to those tools, but this is kind of what the PDF looks like and you've got the different tools that you can click through. I'll show you a couple of my favorites today, uh, starting with the top one, which is Opus Clip. Opus Clip is really an amazing tool and this is uh, what it looks like here. What it does is you can upload a video. Now this can be a horizontal video, it can be any length, you upload that video and what it's gonna do is it's automatically gonna cut it to vertical right? For Instagram reels, for TikToks, for YouTube shorts. And it's also going to add captions and emojis for you. Now, the real power comes with what's called AI curation, which uh, basically it takes the transcription of the video and it understands what the video is about. Now, from that understanding, it says, you know what, this portion right here is a really good hook that might draw in people from, from their attention, right? And it'll draw in the attention span of these people. And we're going to put this at the beginning and then we're going to pair it with these relevant highlights that also, you know, pair well with the video. And it creates a short form uh, piece of content from a long form video. So just to give you an example of a use case of how this can be used, I set up a camera at the back of the room for our team training, right? I'm the chief operating officer of a mega team brokerage in North Carolina. And I did just a quick 13 minute presentation for my team. I uploaded that video to Opus and here's what it did. So you can see 13 minutes and 51 seconds. This is from a team training back in January. I threw it into Opus. It cut it to vertical. It added all the captions, but it also gave me from that 13 minutes, it gave me eight different options of YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, or TikToks that I can use. So I can decide how many of these I want to use. 
and I can go through and I can say, yeah, this, this one's good. I'm going to post this to social. It's ready to go. Can you imagine all the time that you can save in editing videos and having this content ready to go for social media? It's an absolute game changer. Another tool I want to show you, uh, and I'll probably just leave it at this, but it's a, it's a fantastic one. This is the last one on my list. It's called Designer. And with Designer, you can create eBooks and flip books and lead magnets with any type of content. So let's say, for an example, you have a blog that you wrote, or you use ChatGPT to write a blog about a specific, um, a specific topic. Right. So let's say we write one about uh, the top five tips uh, before selling your home. We take that blog. Now you can import any type of media. You can import a video. You can import PDFs. You can do any type of um, media, even podcasts, audio. It will turn that media into an ebook or a flip book. So if you were to write a blog about the top five tips before selling your home, you paste that blog into Designer, and now it's going to create you an ebook, a downloadable ebook that you can offer, right? So let's say, hey, I've got this new ebook. I'm going to give it to you for free, or you could charge, you know, 99 cents, whatever you wanted to download this ebook. And all you do is you get the name, phone number, and email address of the people that want that free content. Well, if you have now a lead magnet getting contact information from people who are interested in the top five tips before selling their home, then they're probably interested at some point in selling their home, right? Or they have a friend who wants to sell their home at some point. So now you're getting leads from this content. You've already done the work of creating the content. You might as well have an ebook or a flip book or something generated um, to promote that content for you. So it's a really powerful tool and um, you can get leads from it as well. So I've got that list of 10. Again, this is the, the PDF here. So you've got a, a list of 10 with the links that you can check out. Definitely check out some of these tools. They can be very helpful for real estate agents. But again, don't get overwhelmed. Don't go crazy. Pick one or two tools that you're like, hey, I want to dive into this and just use that one or two and, and jump in. So now the the elephant in the room, the the tool that everyone uses, the you know the big daddy is uh, definitely Chat GPT. Everyone uses Chat GPT. It seems like now every time I do a conference or a presentation, there's always people in the room that haven't used Chat GPT, yet, and that's okay. If you're one of those people, that's okay. But you're gonna want to jump on board and start using this thing, right? So if you don't have an account, I want you to go get an account. I want you to sign up for an account and I want you to um, create create that login because there is a free ChatGPT uh, account, okay? This is what it looks like. This is, if you were to search for ChatGPT, it's by a company called OpenAI where you can try ChatGPT, you can sign up for that free account. Now, if you have a ChatGPT account, I would also recommend you download the official app. It is available uh, for iPhone and for Android. This is what it looks like. So it has that white background with the black logo. It's by OpenAI. There's a lot of them on there that try and look like it's ChatGPT, but this is the one you want. It syncs with your account. So if you do something on, uh, on the computer and then you pull it up on your phone, you know, it syncs, the, the history syncs, and you can kind of continue the conversation or create new ones on, on the go. But this here, uh, ChatGPT, I want to run through just some very simple things that ChatGPT can do. Now, there's seven, I would say, use cases that generically people will use ChatGPT for. And I want to give those to you. So if you're taking notes, you can take notes of the seven, and I'll just kind of breeze past them really quickly. And then I'm going to show you some really good prompts because in this PDF that I've given you, I'm also giving you 10 really good prompts that you can literally just copy and paste into ChatGPT and get massive value from. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the, the top seven use cases of ChatGPT. Again, if you're taking notes, this is ChatGPT. Okay, uh, if those of you who haven't used it before, this little search bar down here is where you're gonna put your question or if you're wanting information. Think of this as like a search engine on steroids, right? The difference between a chat GPT and like a regular Google search is that the Google search engine gives you a list of static results and uh, chat GPT 
comes back with a conversational res response, right? So you can ask a question and it gives you a conversational response. So the seven use cases, number one, if you're taking notes, number one is you can ask ChatGPT simple questions, all right? You can ask it simple questions. This would be anything that you could Google, right? So I always like to say, you know, something simple like uh, who won the Super Bowl in 1995, and it will give you a response with, you know, it gives you the score, who they beat, right? And it's very easy because I don't have to go through a bunch of different articles and, and figure out the information. It's just boom. Now, um, chat GPT remembers everything that was said in this chat. So I can train it by continuing to talk about, um, about this topic. So for an example, if I said, um, who were the starting uh, quarterbacks? I don't have to give it any more reference because it knows that I'm talking about this game, right? If I were to Google this, right after I Googled this, I would not get this response. But it says Steve Young was the quarterback for the 49ers and Stan Humphreys was the quarterback for the Chargers because it understands I'm talking about this game because we're in this conversation, right? Which is really powerful because I can prime it with certain information. I can prompt it. I can train it. And then I can get content from that training. That's the power of ChatGPT. All right. So number one is simple questions. Number two is you can generate lists. So you could generate any type of list. You could do ideas, hobbies, questions, business ideas, whatever, whatever you wanted, right? Um, the power here is I always tell people be specific, be as specific as possible with all of your prompts. So for an example, if I wanted to create a list of 10 potential hobbies, right? I want to pick up a new hobby. I could say, and this is what most people would probably do, um, you know, give me a list of 10 potential uh, new hobbies, right? It will come up with a list of 10 random hobbies. Now, you know, I'm not really a candle making person. Um, you know, this stuff doesn't really speak to me. What I could have done is I could be very specific and I could say, you know, I'm looking to pick up a new hobby. I could say I'm uh, a 34 year old male. I love sports. I love being outside and I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. And then I could say, give me 10 potential new hobbies I can start and make it specific to Greensboro, right? Same question, but I've given it a lot of detail. So now here, I'm gonna get a lot of outdoor kind of sports related things that I can do, but also it's going to be specific to my city and it's gonna actually bring up some certain things from my city um, that I can try out. So be specific in your requests. Okay. Uh, so number one was simple questions. Number two is generate lists. Number three is long form written content. Okay. This has the ability to create long form content for you. Uh, blogs, articles, email newsletters, whatever it is, you can write that. So if I were to go in here, um, this is technically the wrong way to write a blog, but this is how most people are doing it. They'll say, write me a 1,000 word blog because you can specify the length about the top five tips before selling a home, right? Since that's what we brought up before, we'll see what it does. Here we go. Top five tips. Boom. It's going to go through. It's going to give me my five tips and it's probably going to end with a conclusion. All right. That's, that's good. That's fine. People are copying this. They're pasting it in. And that's okay. Now, at the end of this call, I'm going to show you the right way to write a blog. This is not the right way to do it, but it will get you, uh, you know, halfway there. So number three, long form written pieces. Number four then is feedback prompts. You can ask it to give you feedback on things that you've done. So for an example, I have a blog on my website. I copied my blog. I pasted it in here and I said, give me feedback on what I could have done to write this better, to be more engaging to my reader. Boom. And it gave me feedback based on reading my blog. Said, well, you could try and tweak this. You could do this. You could do this. Imagine how real estate agents could use this thing. Imagine if you record your calls in your CRM or if you have a CRM that records your calls, you could essentially very easily take that recording, get the transcription, 
paste in the transcription of the call and say, what could I have done better to acquire this customer? Right. We have to think outside the box on how we can use these tools and not only use them for property descriptions, listing descriptions, Facebook posts. But there's a lot of other things that we can do as real estate agents to boost our business and get really good results. So feedback prompts is a big one. Number five is modification prompts. OK, this would be translating to another language lengthening something, shortening something, rewording something. So let's go back to this blog that it wrote us, okay? And I'm just gonna take the conclusion um, to show you as a uh, demonstration. I could say translate this to Chinese and I can paste in whatever I'm wanting and watch what happens. This will happen for any language, translates to different languages. I could take that same thing and I could say, um, expand this to a thousand words and then I paste in just the conclusion and it will write me a thousand words about what this conclusion is about, right? So I can expand text. I can shorten text. So let's say I want this entire thing, like it's writing this entire thing that it expanded. I'm going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to say, uh, turn this into a tweet. And pasting in the entire article, guys, look at all this. And I just said, hey, write, write a tweet for me. Boom. Watch what's going to happen. I've got a tweet with emojis and with hashtags, and it's done. So you can shorten something. You can lengthen something. You can rephrase something. I could literally just say, um, you know, reword this. And I'm going to paste in that whole blog. It's going to write the whole thing in a different way but meaning the same thing. So there's a lot of power, a lot of potential with modification prompts. And that can be huge. Um, number six then is instructional prompts, how to's, guidelines. I can ask it how to do anything. I could say, how do I build a birdhouse? And now it's going to give me the materials that I need, the steps, one, two, three, all the way down. And it'll tell me how to do anything, which can be very helpful. And then last but not least, uh, number seven use case uh, is information extraction. Guys, I can extract data from text, books, articles, whatever. So if I were to say, write me a summary about the book, good to great, watch what's going to happen. Boom. Now I have a full summary about that book and I can extract data from articles, books, whatever I want, right? Super, super powerful. So um, one thing I want to do is I want to give you guys a workaround because there is one major limitation of ChatGPT. And then I'm going to show you some of those prompts that I've given you in that PDF that are super valuable and how to use them uh, before I end today. But one of the biggest um, issues with ChatGPT is that it is only trained on data up until September of 2021. So let's say for an example, I asked uh, who won the Super Bowl in 2022, it's not going to know. It says, I'm sorry, my knowledge only goes up to this date. Now that can be an issue, especially for real estate agents, because now we can't create any data, any um, blogs, any Facebook posts, whatever it is we're trying to create. We can't create any of that uh, for current market uh, data and trends. It doesn't know. Like if I asked it to do a thing on the current market, it's going to talk about how interest rates are so low, blah, 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 because it's trained on September 2021 through that time. Now, for those of you who um, want to know how to get around this, there's an easy way to do this. And most agents are just like, oh, well, I guess I'm just gonna create generic content then that doesn't have to do with current mortgage rates, current inventory, current market data. No, guys, you can absolutely still create content with current data. Here's the best way to do it. So for the free version, which is GPT 3.5, right? This has all been done on the free version today. Go to the Chrome Web Store. Just Google Chrome Web Store. This is what it looks like. You have a little search bar right here. And I want you to type in web, W-E-B, chat, C-H-A-T, G-P-T, web, chat, G-P-T, no spaces, hit enter. You're going to get three results. The middle one with this dark graphic, that's what you want to install. So just install this, now, ChatGPT, when you access it through Chrome, you're going to have this button right here that says Web Access, okay? 
So now if you turn that on before you ask the question and you say who won the Super Bowl in 2022, it's going to reference the internet before it gives you its answer. So watch this. It's writing out the contents of what it referenced. And now my answer is the Los Angeles Rams. Here's all the information on the game. Boom. So if I continue to talk to ChatGPT in this conversation, it knows. And it was only trained through September 2021, but now it knows. So I can turn that web access off now and I can continue the conversation about all this data that it just learned. So real estate agents, turn on web access, ask it to give you a full summary of the current market data, housing market trends in your specific city, your specific zip code market, whatever it is, say to include the current mortgage interest rates, say to include the current housing inventory and all the current trends. It will write you a full summary based on today when you turn on web access and then have it create content for you after then write the blog, then write the video script, right? Then do those things because it will be trained on current data, right? Now, if you are a paid user of ChatGPT, you do not have to use this web extension because with GPT-4, you have access to what are called plugins, which is third-party plugins. I like to describe these kind of as like um, apps for the iPhone, right? Plugins are like third-party apps. So you go in here and you have several different apps that you can um, install for free and then you deploy them. So one of my favorites here is Web Pilot, W-E-B-P-I-L-O-T right here. You just have this uh, turned on and it does the same thing. I think it does a better job uh, even at getting data from the web and you don't have to have this web access button. So there are definitely ways around getting web access for sure. Do that so you can get current data. All right. So I'm going to end this call with showing you a couple of the pieces of value that's in that PDF that you um, have scanned from that QR code. I gave you my top 10 tools, but I also have uh, 10 prompts that you can copy and paste, and these will absolutely change the game. So I'm going to show you a couple of them real quick. This one here is train chat GPT to fully understand your business and goals. Uh, basically what this prompt does, and you just highlight it and you copy it and you paste it in. But what I'm telling it to do is, hey, I want you to generate content for me in future prompts. But before you do, I want you to fully understand my business, customers, target audience, goals. And based on everything that I'm giving you, I want all of your future responses to be based on all of my business goals, everything that I answer. So what I'm asking ChatGPT to do is to achieve this, ask me at least 25 questions about my business, customers, target audience, blah, 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 vision, goals and any other necessary details to complete the upcoming task to the best of your ability. So if you copy this and you go over to ChatGPT and you paste it in, and I'm using the free version for all these guys, you paste this in, it's going to ask you 25 questions about your business. So what you would do is you would take this and you would copy these questions and I would put this into like a Google Doc, right? Just copy these and just start to answer them. Answer as many as you can, as detailed as you can. The more detail you give it, the more specific content you're going to get for your specific business. But copy these, put them in a document like this, and just start answering them. What's the name of your business? All right, my business name is this. Can you describe the products or service? Boom. Like answer as many of these as you can. And then once you're done answering... Just copy these answers and paste it back into chat GPT. And you could say, all right, you know, here's, um, here's the answers to the questions. Paste them in below and it's going to fully understand your business and all the content it spits out in this specific chat. You see the history over here. You can always reference these old chats, but in this specific chat, it's going to remember your business. Now you can edit this name. So like, let's say this was um, Stringer Realty, right? And I was training it on Stringer Realty. I can do that and I can always reference this and ask for content specifically for Stringer Realty. Absolute game changer, start with that one. Uh, some other ones that I have in here is once you've trained it on your business and your goals, this is 90 content ideas that your target audience may wanna know. You can copy this and paste this in 
and it's going to come up with 90 lesser known facts about whatever topic you want, right? Anything that's in a bracket is a variable that you can change to your specific market, niche, whatever. Now, if you've trained it on your business, it already knows. So you could say generate a list of 90 lesser known facts about my business, and it knows exactly what your business is. And then it's going to give you um, ideas for blogs, for short form video content, for Facebook posts, whatever it is, whatever it is you're wanting to do, email newsletters, text message, drip campaigns. It doesn't matter. You ask it. Now you've got 90 ideas it's going to list out. Once you get 90 ideas, you can paste those in to this content calendar, right? So what I'm asking it to do is like, hey, I want you to help me come up with a content calendar and whatever type of media that you're wanting to create, you could say blog, podcast, short form video, YouTube channel, whatever it is, email, newsletter, it doesn't matter. And then you're telling it how many times a week you want that uh, to post those things. So let's say you want to do two short form videos a week. Well, put in short form video right here, put in the number two right here, and then it's going to target clickbait style titles for you and create a full content calendar in a table that looks like a spreadsheet. And it says, all right, on September 4th, you're posting this and it's gonna give you the title. And it's all based on the 90 content ideas that you just generated, which are all based on your business that you just told it about. So everything's working together. You paste in your list of 90 down here, boom, now you have a full content calendar. It's amazing. Um, some other ones that are in here, just to kind of give you an idea, creating a buyer persona with a list of pain points. Guys, you can go in and be specific about what, um, what market you're in, what um, price point you're trying to target, and it's going to list out a full buyer persona with a list of pain points, things that you can do to help that buyer or that seller. And then you can create a targeted ad or even just content. You could create an email. You could create a short form video addressing and solving the problems of that target buyer persona. It's amazing. And you're very specific because you've trained ChatGPT on your specific business. So it's not giving you random generic crap, right? It's giving you good stuff. And so that's a good one. I have craft the perfect blog post. Remember I told you I would show you how to do uh, the blog post. All you have to do guys is so simple. Copy this prompt and I'm not going to read you the whole thing because it's long, but basically what I'm telling it is, Hey, I want you to be a, a proficient SEO content writer. I want you to give me at least 15 headings and subheadings H1, H2, H3, H4. I want it to look pretty. I want it to be 2000 words. I want it to have an FAQ section, blah, 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 blah. Right. The only thing you have to do is put in the title of your blog at the very end. See how it says uh, title of your blog or topic? Well, what's the one we did before? That was, um, I think it was top five tips before selling your home, right? We'll do the same exact thing. All you do is hit enter. And again, this is on the free version. Look how beautiful this is. First off, you have all of the headings and the subheadings. And you have, you know, invest in small upgrades for big impact, the uh, price it right from the start, partnering with a knowledgeable real estate agent. And then you have a conclusion and FAQs. The FAQs are going to help you with Google because Google is going to reward you when you are answering questions that people have. And so this is the correct way to write a blog because now you've got it perfectly laid out the exact way that you want. And all you had to do was copy and paste my prompt that I've created for you, right? Um, just to show you, um, there's analyze a specific text for style, voice, and tone. You can literally have ChatGPT sound like you. You copy this and you paste in something that you have written or said. It could be a text message, email, doesn't matter. And it's saying, look, I want you to analyze this and I want you to apply the exact same style to all future responses. Boom. Boom. Now ChatGPT is going to sound like you because you've put your voice in it, right? So there's a lot of value in this. You can do this for listing descriptions, amazing for listing descriptions. You can generate 10 hooks for content or ads uh, to get really good hooks. And this is for an Instagram carousel content creator. 
super, super powerful information all in this one PDF for you. So I hope that was helpful. I don't want you guys to be scared of AI. I don't want you to be scared of chat GPT. I want you to understand that it's really something that can help you. It's something that can really be a benefit to your business, right? And you can get so much efficiency, productivity. You can generate revenue with this thing. It can save you a ton of time. Guys, the whole purpose of all of this is you did not join real estate to be a content creator. You didn't join real estate to be a copywriter. You joined real estate probably because you like serving people. You like the relationships. You're good with people face to face. So use AI to help you 10x your productivity and get all the things that are low value activities that don't really move the needle. Get all of those things done in a much quicker time, right? So that you have more time for the high value activities, the revenue generating activities, the face to face relationship building activities to where you can service your client at a much higher level. AI is not going to make it less human. AI is going to take all of the non-human things off your plate so that you can be more human and you're not bogged down with all of the other junk. So again, my name's Phil Stringer. I hope this was helpful to you. Go ahead and download that uh, PDF so that you have access to all those free tools. And uh, again, I hope this was valuable and we'll see you next time.